Liz here. Um, I thought I would do something slightly different today and given the fact that it's Halloween um, and happy Halloween to anyone I celebrate, um, I would do a story, um, a short story, um, although you know me so my short story would probably turn into a long one but it's not that long. Um, in the UK we do celebrate Halloween, not as big as in America. Um, I know I follow a lot of YouTubers and have friends in America and I know it's a really big deal if we celebrate it. Um, but here we kind of, you know, the kids go trick or treating, people decorate their houses, um, inside, not, you don't really see outside at all. Um, we do that at Christmas, which then I think is like in America, Thanksgiving seems to be bigger than Christmas. I don't know. But anyway, um, this Halloween I am not doing anything because we are waiting in for our new bed to arrive, which is, well, I'm waiting in, Adam's at work, um, which is really exciting because it's my biggest ever purchase, apart from my car. Um, it's a super comfy bed, it's a king size bed, I have more room, my joints, last night we, because we had to take the bed down, um, it, we had to sleep on a lilo, it was the most uncomfortable thing ever. Anyway. Point of this video. So my story is, um, I have loads of experiences um, with the paranormal. I completely believe in the other side, the paranormal, and people who passed over. Um, I've been to, I've seen quite a few psychics, um, all of whom have been at venues that I've never been, people, there's nobody there I've known. So there's no way no one could have like looked up on Facebook anything or spoken to a friend or you know, hunted me down and found out information before, and they've all been spot on, uh, especially, especially, um, there's a spiritualist church in the town I live in, and I used to go there, I haven't been for a long time, because there's not a lot of room for my wheelchair, but, uh, I think the third or fourth time I went, my granddad came through, um, and I'm, I've heard, I'm Claire audience, so I hear, um, like, sometimes I hear, people from the dead speak which I know sounds really creepy but it's not to me um and I'm not like going mad but it'll be things like um at Christmas time last year um we were at my mum and dad's house for Christmas day and in the evening we were talking about I think my grandparents and then my mum was sitting in the corner of the living room and from behind her I heard this low deep like male voice um just like mumble almost like when people walk past a window and you can vaguely hear them go blah, 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 blah. and it was like that it was like blah, 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 blah. and I was like what was that and my mum was like what was what and I was like that male voice and she was like I didn't hear anything and because not everyone can hear it if you haven't got the ability she didn't hear it nobody else in the room heard it it was my dad and Adam and me and my mum and they live back from the road with a gravel drive the cars are in front of the window so there's no one way anyone was walking past the window um, we didn't have the TV on or the radio or anything. We were just chatting. So that was quite weird. But my main story is that um, the title of this video is true. Um, so I used to live in London, as most of you who watch this channel know, um, for, gosh, I was there for six years before I had to move back because of my stupid EDS and pots. Um, and basically I, um, I didn't... I gave up my car because living in London you don't need it and parking anywhere um is a complete pain so basically I used to get um I used to do top-up shops during the week but I would do one big shop maybe once a month and there was a bus that took me to our nearest Asda and I was loaded fully loaded before my EDS was bad actually really bad it was a year after I got diagnosed and um, eventually I got one of these shopping trolleys on wheels, like old people have, but it was a really cool one. Um, I don't know where that's gone, but <laughs> anyway, I was struggling back from the bus stop because it was a bit of a walk. It was like a five minute walk from the bus stop that dropped me off on the way home and my actual house. And you have to walk past this parade of shops, there's like news agents and, um, there was a co-op and there was other, um, like bakers and stuff like that. And I was walking along and I was coming up to the news agents where I used to top up my Oyster card so I knew the people who owned it fairly well. 
And as I was coming up to it, I heard my grandma's voice really, really clearly shout, Elizabeth, because all my family called me my proper name, Elizabeth, not Liz, or Potsy Zebra. <laughs> um, and I was like, it made me stop because at first I thought, is that someone I know? And I looked round to see if anyone had called my name. And I thought, well, no one calls me that in London at all. And I don't know anyone round here except my housemate who I was living with, who was away at the time. And I remember it was a Saturday as well, because um, obviously it wasn't when I was at work. And I was walking back and I had like three bags in each hand. So I was really, really heavy. And I heard my name be called and I stopped because obviously I stopped to look round, but I also was getting really tired and my hands were hurting. So I stopped and put the bags down. And literally two seconds later, above the news agents, the news agents had a canopy that came out, which most do, to kind of shade, shade it from the sun. Um, the window above the news agents just blew out and smashed directly on the pavement below, right in front of me. Um, in fact, a little bit of glass got onto the top of my foot. I think I had flip flops on, uh, which you in the UK you call them uh, their thongs. I think you call them in America and Australia. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, I know Australia you do because I've been there, but. Um, yeah, so I was like in shock because I had a little tiny cut on the top of my foot from the glass, but nothing else. But had I not heard the voice and stopped, because I would have just carried on walking whether my hands were aching or not, um, I would have been directly under that. And if you have shards of glass smashed on your head, it would have either killed me or given me severe head injuries. I could have bled to death. I don't know what would have happened, considering... I got a teeny tiny piece of glass and it did cut the top of my foot. This was like a whole window pane. And the news agent owner at the time was actually standing in the doorway talking to a customer, but he was under the canopy and I was like just out further out from the canopy. So I wasn't under the canopy. And he looked at me and he was like, oh my God, are you okay? How on earth did you not stand under that? And I was like, told him like, I heard my grandma call my name. He's like, where is she? And I was like, well, she's dead. <laughs> My grandma had died nine years before and um, I remember it being a Saturday because I had to call my parents straight away and I knew they were on holiday. I was like, oh my God, I've had a near-death experience. My grandma, who has been dead nine years, has just saved my life. And for me, it was really a bizarre thing and a nice thing because previously to that, I had actually recorded my grandma's voice um, in doing like a... Um, EVP which is electronic voice phenomena and I'd been asking questions and I'd asked a question about um, if there's any way you can prove who you are by something that no one else would know and she said a nickname she used to call me and she was from Luton and it was like kind of very like a little bit cockney type like you'd give people funny nicknames and she called me Pigeon Butte and so I recorded, I was doing this recording at the time, I heard nothing, played it back and not even having to enhance the sound or slow it down. I heard a whisper of a lady's voice going, Pigeon Butte. And I was like, OK. And then further on, like about 30 seconds later again, it goes Pigeon. And I was like, and I've always thought my grandma was like being my guardian angel because she was, we had a great relationship when she was alive and she died very suddenly and unexpectedly. Um like that was nine years before the the incident now it's it's uh 17 years um so it was just the most bizarrest thing ever um and I was so lucky because I always know that she's my guardian angel and I believe now my granddad's passed over too um that was nine years ago he um he also is looking over me and it's a nice thing and I'm never complacent about it. I don't think, well, I can survive anything because I've got guardian angel, two guardian angels looking over me. But just in that moment, I thought, wow, like, and what it turned out as well, because I said to the shop owner, well, you know, obviously a window blowing out of its pane is a, not a normal thing to happen. And we didn't know if it was a gas explosion, if someone had thrown something, like, because people, he didn't live upstairs. He rented the apartment out, the flat. Um, so we didn't know if someone had like thrown something and to smash the window, we didn't know. And so a week later, um, I went back and I asked him because the 
um, all the glass had gone and the window had been replaced. And he said it was a gas explosion, which was even more scary because you think, wow, um, that's just horrific. And they had to redo all inside the flat and everything. But the shop was okay. I was okay. I was just really shaken up. And from then on, I could not walk that side of the road at all. Like, it shook me up that much that if I was getting the bus back and I still went back to the same did the same shop at Asda I would have to cross the road just before I got to the shop and then walk even though there were you know the same kind of the other side of the road there weren't any shops but there were still windows above me it just it really did freak me out and I just always think that that is so bizarre because if I hadn't have stopped who knows I might not be here I might be you know anything could have happened you just don't know but yeah, very bizarre situation. Um, and I have so many more bizarre things that have happened to me. So if you'd be interested in hearing more stories, let me know in the comments below. Um, and I shall certainly do another story. I've got so many. Um, and they're all true. They're not fabricated in any way at all. Um, so yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click the like button because it helps me get more views and it helps me become a better YouTuber. And if you subscribe, you'll get notifications if you click the little bell when I post a new video. Um, yeah, so hope you have a great Halloween, by the way, as well. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned and click the picture of me on the screen right now and you can subscribe to my channel. Please like the video and click the bell notification if you want to know when my next videos are put onto YouTube. Um, there should be a box on the screen where you can see other videos I've done. Happy watching!